Hello fellas, in today's video I wanted to walk you through the process of making prints, perhaps highly specialized ones, and then all the way to sending them off to god knows where. What I learned is that there are a few videos like this on YouTube, but everyone kind of has their own take and then it's always a little bit different and at the same time like as someone that wants to make prints and sell prints perhaps, or you know present them to someone and even like things like those small things like packaging like those the needs of an individual in that process is always a little bit different too so yeah i just wanted to make my own version of that kind of tutorial video so let's just call it ulysses is, is, is a handmade print collection tutorial and how to send them off the main reason i wanted to make this video today is because recently i made a collection of six prints that come together as a short story, had some words on it. Um, and I made that for myself and I handmade him in a way, but the outcome was pretty nice. So I decided to um, make a limited edition run and sell them online. And I successfully sold a few. I have about four left, I think. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to show you guys um, my process of printing and packaging. In terms of what the print collection looks like, this is um, what we have. So this is basically version zero of the collection. Again, they are six uh, photographs that I really like, um, printed on, on museum level archival paper. It's a very textured paper um, with very nice uh, texture to it. Wow, great sentence, Ulysses. It is signed and numbered on the back with a date and also the title of this very, very short story that I made. On the front, we have a line slash verse, which is part of this short story, written on a separate sheet of paper, um, handwritten by me, uh, cut and pasted on the print with non-destructive tape. So again, basically, as I'm replicating this process, I will run it through with you guys. And we will also be doing things like packaging and talking, perhaps. So, uh, moving on, I wanted to introduce a few things that I intend to use um, for packaging and presenting uh, this collection of prints. So, first of all, for the printing itself, I've used this paper called Hanamuel um, William Turner. Very odd name, but that's what it is. And in terms of the writing attached to it, I want a handcrafted yet mysterious kind of feel to it. So I wrote it on a separate piece of paper. I cut it out. Um, I wrote it with um, pencil. And I taped it with non-destructive um, archival tape. tape, tape. And non-acidic. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. So again, acid-free scotch tape. And you need some kind of paper to print your prints. And on top of that print, what I want to do is I want to lay out, um, again, a non-acidic kind of translucent-ish paper um, so that um, the print stays safe, but also for a means of presentation. So I chose um, non-acidic um, washi. Washi is a Japanese handcrafted type of paper. The print will then go into a sleeve. And because... Um, we have six prints this time as a set. What I wanted to do was I wanted to kind of bind them but in a loose manner. So I had this big piece of paper. I'm going to wrap the six prints and the, you know, the washi in the middle um, by folding this paper like so and then having the prints in the middle. It also adds a bit of color to the presentation, which is... Um, something new that I'm trying out, so we'll see. Which will then be sandwiched between these two sheets of cardboard, like, like so. Which will then proceed to be packaged in these hard-edged uh, mailers. Again, if they fit, hopefully. When you're choosing all this garbage, make sure that they fit the size of your prints. So for me, this time the prints are basically an A4, which is like 30 centimeters by 21 centimeters or so. If you want inches, I don't. I, I'll show it somewhere on the screen maybe. 
And obviously, if you want to print stuff, you need a printer and you need some ink. So I'll head to my computer upstairs and then we'll see um, how this goes. Let's go. Okay, so now we're in the editing room. Nothing fancy up here, by the way. I have my color managed monitor. This is important. Make sure your monitor is calibrated. If you're printing uh, photographs and you want to make them of good quality or at least accurate color and contrast. I have my trusty Canon. I, uh, Canon. I, <laughs> I am using a uh, Canon 10. No, I'm using my trusted Canon Pro 10S uh, for the printing today. Again, nothing too special. It's a good printer, but nothing super crazy. And for the paper, as I've mentioned, I'm using the uh, William Turner by Hanamule. These were quite expensive, honestly, which is also the reason why I'm selling these prints in the first place. Uh, there's 25 sheets in here, and they cost about 6,000 yen, which is like 60 bucks for 25 sheets of paper. Mmm, ouch. And we have two sets, because um, I'm selling six prints in a set, and I have a limit limited edition of 10, which brings us to um, 60 sheets of paper, which means I lack. But for now, I have six orders um, in place, so that's enough paper for now. But also for paper, especially if you're printing on your own, make sure you get extra because you never know what's going to happen. You're going to make a few mistakes. And the printer also may make a few mistakes, especially if you're running out of ink. So be careful. And today in front of me, I have Lightroom opened up. I'm using the uh, Lightroom plugin for this um, printer specifically for the Canon. Um, I can print directly from Light Lightroom, which is very convenient. Honestly, printing in itself should be a separate video. So I'm only going to go through a few of the general tips that I have through my experience in printing. Um, if you're printing on paper, well, that was stupid. Yeah, of course you're printing on paper. Um, Make sure that you make the image a little bit brighter than you think, actually. Um, on digital screens, usually the image seems brighter than it actually is because for LCDs, you know, we have things that are like back illuminated. So like if you're looking at it on your iPhone, for example, like on Instagram, some of the images um, that you process look a little bit brighter than, than you, you intended, maybe. So that's kind of why you also make it darker in the image in itself. But for the printing, don't go too dark, especially if you're printing on like things like textured paper too, because then it's, or more matted paper, sorry, because you're lacking that glow. So yeah, again, uh, make sure it's a little bit brighter than you think. For colors, again, make sure you're using a color managed monitor, or at least you're calibrating your monitor so that the colors are accurate on it. What else? Um, oh yeah, make sure you're printing um, high quality images. Uh, don't print out things that are like a few hundred kilobytes. Make sure that you don't do that. These days um, for Lightroom and I think on Photoshop, there's this thing called, I think it was hyper resolution, super resolution, I forgot. But that's very handy if you're printing. So go check that out if you're printing out lower quality images. And this, this isn't a general tip or anything, but for my project this time, because I have six images um, with a story behind it, you know, I again, I showed you the prints, but I have a handwritten um, message or, or words underneath the print or the picture. So what I need to do is I need to create white borders around um, my image. Depending on your needs, make sure that you're laying out the dimensions correctly on whatever software that you're using. This can get complicated sometimes because you need to adjust this according to, for example, if you're framing it, then you need to adjust it according to the mat that you have around it, uh, the frame. This time we're not framing the pictures, so life is just a little bit easier. So, okay, I'll start touching up the images and then we can go on to printing. We have all the prints actually printed out, uh, thanking my printer for not crashing on me for all that workload. I'm sorry if the scenery keeps on changing. It's because um, I'm on day three right now. I'm I'm, do, I'm doing other jobs simultaneously, so I'm you know spreading the workload uh, throughout the week. And what I'll be doing from now is assembling the handwritten cutouts that I've made um, via pencil on a separate piece of paper. 
um, taping them uh, to the print via non-destructive and I think non-acidic was it or acid-free tape. I'll sign and label each print on the back and then we can start thinking of packaging and assembling the set of prints. Okay, it's been a few days, which is why I look kind of different. Um, I got all the printing done. I've signed all of them. I've done all the writing. Um, I've taped on all the writing on the prints too. So now we're gonna move on to the packaging and assembling of the set of prints. So here are the prints. Um, I have all the prints covered in a very thin uh, tracing paper made of washi, a Japanese um, type of paper because um, the, these prints have a certain coating on the front. So if you kind of rub them, um, the coating might rub off as well, which is somewhat a natural thing. So I'm not too fussy about it, I think, but at least when it gets to um, the people that bought the prints, I want it to be in good condition. And if you're wondering why I'm taking so much time on these, well, there are a set of six prints. I made six editions for now out of 10, which is that's 36 prints um, on my own, which is a lot. There's some spacing involved. And also, again, because there's some handwriting here, I'm writing all of these by hand and I'm cutting them on my own and taking them on, on my own. So that's some, uh, some manual labor for you guys. But uh, I had some fun making them and we're finally um, assembling these, which is very uh, exciting. Okay, so I have all my stuff ready. I am working on this uh, industrial chair this time because I don't want to move the setup too much for this for the sake of this video. So please bear with me. We'll go through um, one set of prints in the process of how I'll assemble these um, together. But for example, if you're only going to be assembling, you know, one print or a few, not six and a bunch of other papers in between, then I suggest you get um, the correct size of these uh, print sleeves and then put the prints in these sleeves. Okay, so first, because I'm doing a set, I wanna just make sure that um, I have everything in order and I have the tracing paper um, on each uh, print. Okay, everything's in order and it looks good. I've checked. Um, this time, because we're not gonna be using the print sleeves, but also um, for sake of um, presentation and adding some color to the packaging, I'll be using this textured light blue paper here. It's a little bit thick um, because I'll be wrapping the prints with this. I chose this refreshing but um, beautiful light blue color this time because a lot of the, the images that I have in this, in this um, set are uh, quite, I would say, um, somewhat contrasty and somewhat deep in color. So in a way, by contrasting that with a lighter color, um, I thought um, I don't know, I thought it would be a good uh, presentation. So, uh, nothing too complicated. I'll just be wrapping these um, in this sheet of paper. Honestly, it would have been cool if I could make like a small booklet out of this, but it wouldn't make sense because um, the images this time are both in a portrait orientation, but also um, in horizontal um, landscape orientation. So this time, to an extent, I'm kind of leaving it up to um, the people that bought these set of prints, they can either, you know, keep it in, in this presentation or, you know, they can either frame it and hang it one by one, whichever way is fine. It's 
up to them, I'm cool with that. And then what I'll do next is, so I have this hemp string, I will be um, tying this package um, with this hemp string, but not too tight because I don't want to damage um, the edges of these prints. Again, is this necessary? Nope, not at all actually. But again, I'm doing it for the sake of presentation. Next, um, I'm getting my cardboard boards. Ah. And then um, I'm simply sandwiching the prints. I'm getting my acid-free, non-damaging, I guess, tape. Um, and I'll only be um, taping I'll be taping uh, these cardboard boards or cutouts or whatever you want to call it um, together. So you know that keeps them just in place. That's enough. This is just for packaging, not the presentation. And lastly, we have our mailers. Very hard, they have hard edges, so hopefully the prints don't get damaged. Um, and also make sure that all these things, the sizes are appropriate. So. These cardboard cutouts, these boards are A4, the print because the prints themselves are A4. This is also for A4, but I'm making but they're a little bit bigger than A4 because so because this is, you know, a quite a hefty package. Um, I've checked, they fit in. So yeah, I mean just make sure that all these sizes match. You want to make sure that the corners of the prints aren't protruding too much because um, the corners can be e easily damaged. Or if you're worried, I, I think there are th these things called like edges or, or like corners where like cardboard cutouts and you can like fit them into print corners and that also works. But I've checked and these mailers are pretty hard too um, and they seem fine so I'll just be inserting them into these mailers. Okay thick, but that looks good. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching today's video. I hope this was helpful in some manner. Um, also, I have a few editions left of these prints, so let me know if you're interested and hit me up uh, via email or somehow. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching. Uh, see you guys later. Goodbye. Sayonara. Bye-bye. Oh yeah, quick and a harmless story before we move on with the video. There's this friend, I was gonna have dinner with her a week ago or two. Um, she's actually, um, she's a porn star actually, which I have no issues with at all. Um, she's a friend. And, um, but yeah, the day, the day came that we're gonna have dinner. And then a few hours before she was like, oh, sorry, work is killing me. And then it's, it's take, the shoot is taking so much time. I don't think I can, I can go to dinner. There's this issue with the footage where we're experiencing a lot of fringing in the video um, because I was I accidentally wore denim to the shoot and then the denim was fringing. And first of all, um, first of all, yeah, I knew that she wasn't lying about being late and why? Because well, that's something that's very oddly specific of a detail um, and. I don't think anyone can come up with that excuse. And then I thought to myself a bit. I was like, why is she wearing, <laughs> why is she why is she wearing jeans? It's she's a porn star and she she's saying work. So it's like I'm assuming the photo shoot is maybe it's something weird and odd that I don't know about. You never know. Oh well. But yeah, so so I I I replied. I said um I don't mind if it's too late. Um, I don't have much going on today. And if it's just a quick bite, you know, there, it's not a problem. And then she texted me back an hour later saying that, oh, we're almost done, but sorry, I'm just exhausted. We had to go through a shoot again. <laughs> and um, I couldn't complain because what can you say? That's a very exhausting day.